bear in mind some of these have been asked by other people uh -huh. to ask you. Okay, that's all right. Would you, would you fight a bear with a hammer? Would I fight a bear with a hammer? <laughs> 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 Is that confidential, you know? Confidential. <laughs> okay. Well, um, well, I don't think so. I mean, theoretically, I suppose, if you were in some life-threatening situation and you happen to have a hammer, you know, <laughs> I suppose. But, I mean, yeah. it's funny that I actually bought a hammer the other day. Really? Well, yeah, because the other pictures I took down from yeah. the exhibition, some of them, the ones with the black background, it's just impossible to photograph them through the glass, because there's just so much perfection. Mm. So I have to sort of do them, and then there's those clips that keep the, the board in place. Mm. So I have to have a hammer to pop the so. clips back yeah. on. So. What came first, the chicken or the egg? Uh, what is that, a metaphor for some other big question? <laughs> no, just what came first, the chicken or the egg? Well, there's not really an answer to that, is there? I mean, in your opinion. Well, but the whole point of that is that the reason you can't, I mean, they're both they're interconnected and they go around. I mean, it's a metaphor for things that don't, you can't say one directly causes the other and that's it. It's, they're both causing each other. Do you think you take that approach into your psychological work? Um, what do you mean? Well, I mean, you have to, you, you can't just make it oversimplify things. That's important. You know, over reduce everything to some kind of simple, yes. You know, like what well, medicine, you know, diagnosis. Diagnosis can be important, but it's, it's a sort of a guide or. Mm -hmm. The way your thinking right. should be. It's not saying, yeah, this somehow is the answer to everything, and now we've got the perfect understanding of what the problem is. So you have to take the sophisticated approach. But that's not the same as saying everything is kind of woolly and yeah. unspecific. You still have to have a rationale. Right? But also that you can get things wrong. I think that's not, that's not bad as long as you've got a, a sensible plan or some kind of approach and you know why, mm -hmm. what you need to change, try differently. But it isn't working. What's your favourite design in England? <laughs> well, <laughs> right now it's top man, believe it or not. Sounds a bit embarrassing. Um, but no, it's alright. A sort of uh, upper middle aged geezer like me. <laughs> but I, so I went, I went shopping with my son a couple of years back. I've never been top man for years and years. Mm. Um, but there was an amazing jacket there. It was like this tweed jacket and it just looked really nice. I was just amazed at the price. It was so good, such good value. Mm -hmm. I realised actually there's some good stuff in there that even for you know, an older guy like me can still kind of look kind of nice. And... Would you ever shop in Primark? No, I haven't tried Primark. I know my daughter does. But it's, it's, it's sort of um, discounted stuff, is it? That's, that TK Maxx is that. It's a very discounted stuff. Primark is just sort of cheapish stuff. And yeah. it's alright, it's good for socks. Yeah. It's good for socks and pyjamas. Yeah. First of all, I didn't like online shopping though. Mm -hmm. That's what Top Man's point is. Once you know there's one place that's got a big variety of stuff, mm -hmm. so you don't have to be going trawling around, you know. If you think, well, like, most of the stuff here I quite like, I can just pick and choose things. And I'll probably say it more than I need to. <laughs> <laughs> What's your biggest regret in life? Biggest regret. I don't know. I'm not sure I can put to answer that. I don't know, it's one of those things you'd have to think of. Mm. Yeah, all sorts of things you can. And sometimes you know what's your biggest regret. I still remember thinking about embarrassing things. I feel really wish I had done differently. I can remember when I was at medical school and this. Um, was it the second or third year? And so it was in this rented accommodation here with Jane and some other people. And this, this little woman turned up because she wanted to have some accommodation for, when, for her, I think it was her first or second year. And during the summer holidays, and I said, oh yeah, no problem, because we had a spare room and we were looking for extra people yeah. to come and join. And then because I met this other girl in the holiday, this is a long time ago, medical school, and I rather yeah. fancied her, and, yeah. and therefore I was desperate to keep in contact with her, and I, I offered her so room. this room. Mm -hmm. So, and then that other person turned up right at the beginning of their term. I mean, I felt so rubbish about it, but that was a terrible thing, you know, basically. You know, and actually, it, it didn't really work out with the girl that I fancied. You know. We had a sort of connection there, but it didn't, you know. Are you still in touch with her? No. 
So in a way, I was punished for it. It was a bad thing to do. You know, you haven't felt so bad about something. I, just, I, I did something bad, I let somebody down. I shouldn't have done that. I wouldn't say that's the biggest regret, yeah, but that's something that something. it's very specific and you know, there's, there's no, you know, you can't sort of balance that and say, oh well, that's kind of justified, but it wasn't, it was a bad thing to do. What's the most awkward situation you've ever found yourself in? Um, I can't answer that live on video. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I did that. <laughs> okay, there's only a couple more. What do you like when you're musing? For my music? Mm. Uh, well, I'm, well, for breakfast I make, I, I just get uh, whole rolled oats and pumpkin seeds and raisins. Mm. And we just mix them together. So it's like a self made sort of music. It's very nice, very healthy. Loads of milk. It's good for you. Well, you said about healthy eating. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you go to the gym? Because you to roll down to that hole, because they, they, you break your body breaks them down more slowly. Does it give you more energy throughout the day? Yes. Yeah, so what keeps you going through yeah. your cycle? Um, it's really helpful for cyclists, yeah. But just in general, anything you break down quite slowly is better than if you suddenly load up loads of sugary energy too quickly. Unless you're in the middle of exercise, in which case that's good to know. Should be good. Do you go to the gym? No, not anymore. I used to. A long time ago, I was... Next a while back, I suddenly realised... It's interesting, when, you, when you're sort of in your 20s, early 30s, you actually could be really fit quite easily. Especially you now getting clubbing and dancing and stuff like that. But then, sort of 30s, you can actually get a bit... Unfit really quite quickly, mm. and then you realise actually I need to see the So I started going to the gym and I was doing swimming. I got a bit bored of the gym, the gym can be okay, but then it gets a bit hectic. Swimming for quite a few years, but recently discovered cycling. How long have you been cycling? Well, properly the road cycling for about two and a half years now. So I bought the road bike around about my 48th birthday. Does it not scare you when you're like riding through London, like, and all the buses are cutting you over, like cutting you off? No, yes, no. I mean, but that's yeah. You have to be careful. But it gives you more focus and attention. It can be potentially dangerous, but you know that puts you right in the moment of concentrating on what you're doing and being careful. Would you class that as risky behaviour? No, because it's not. You, you, you get the kid wants to do stupid things. I mean, cyclists can do really daft things, you know, like riding through red lights and, mm. you know, people complain about it. I mean, other road users can be very disrespectful and abusive, but cyclists can also do the same. You know, you've got to be... Sometimes people make really negative about buses. I mean, buses are potentially dangerous, but actually for the bus driver's point of view, it's pretty tricky. You know, you have this huge vehicle, you've got all this stuff happening around, you've got to pull over to the bus stop. So, I think it's important to be respectful of the other road users. Mm. With a bit of mutual respect. Fair enough. So the other thing I find is important is to be, try to be nice to people on the road. You know, rather than getting yeah. to the abusive, you know, shouting or rude gestures of people for doing nasty things, it's actually sort of you know thumbs up or a wave when people does their considerate. It's true. It's the same with horse riding. You get a lot of inconsiderate drivers, but then you get inconsiderate horse riders as well. Yeah. And it's like. Yeah, yeah. And well, they don't acknowledge when like a horse, a, a car passes yeah. slow and wide and yeah, yeah. instead they just focus on all the cars that aren't yeah. doing that and it's just like... Yeah. Well that's true, on, on the club cycle, when you want to see horses, you know, slow right down, mm -hmm. really wide and just give a nice way, you know, and then so the, the riders are often really friendly and smiling, you know, it's just a much better way of doing it. Yeah. Tricky position, yeah. yeah, you know. Fair enough. I think I have one last question that I haven't quite got through. Mm -hmm. Do you wish that your hair was longer? Like, <laughs> how would you feel if your hair was so long you could put it in a ponytail? I think it would suit you. I think you well, should um, come in with a wig one day. I don't wish my hair was longer. Well, my hair could be longer if I wanted it. Okay, it grows. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you not grow it to? No. Um, a long, long time ago, I did have long hair that I put in a ponytail. I'll probably dig out photographs and something. <laughs> <laughs> but I think when you get older, um, keeping it shorter makes you look a little bit younger. 
that one? I don't know, yeah, I like the hair. I like his hair. I've got a nice hairdresser. Do you dye your hair? You dye, yeah, I dye it grey and white, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't need to dye it. It, it, it turned grey very suddenly, actually. How old are you? Let's say, uh, 30 something. It was relatively. Uh, the thing is, it's much better as long as it's still there. Mm, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> well, thanks for spending time talking to me. Yeah, pleasure.